I want to show you an example of nesting Flexbox and Grid together to create a layout using the modern tools that we have now. If you go to labs.jensimmons.com, you'll see this example here. I can click and check it out. This is the kind of layout that we do a lot, teaser cards in kind of a grid layout. And you can see that this is fully responsive. As I make the browser window smaller, everything kind of squishes around. Now this is the kind of layout that we've been trying the last couple of years to do with Flexbox. Flexbox has some advantages over floats or a float-based framework. But the tricky part with Flexbox is that this card that's on the bottom of this layout at the moment will want naturally to be the full width of the space that's available. Or here, it's got one, two, three cards across the first row, but the second row, Flexbox will want to calculate these, giving each one half of the space that's available. We don't want that. We want the layout that you're seeing right now. Now there is a way to use Flexbox and kind of put widths on Flexbox, but in a way, the moment you start setting specific widths on things in Flexbox, you're sort of not getting the advantages of Flexbox. Plus you have to write a lot of code to do that with a lot of media queries. And instead we can use CSS Grid. CSS Grid is going to give us a much better layout with, uh, without fighting the tool, because this is what Grid was invented to do. And then I've got the layout of each one of these cards using Flexbox. So let's look at the uh, markup and I'll explain what I mean. You can see here that I start this with a main element and inside this main element I have several articles. So here's an article, here's an article, here's an article, here's an article. Each one of these articles is one of these cards. The article elements are direct children of the main. So we're going to put a grid container on the main and then each one of the articles becomes a grid item. We're also going to make each one of these articles into a flex container and then the H1, the P, the UL, the image, the button, these things will be flex items in the flexbox formatting context. And you can see here, like if you look at the running code, you can see that the order of the content visually is image, title, description, paragraph, uh, list if there is one, and this buy button. In the markup, however, you can see the order is headline first, then the paragraph, then the list, then the image, then the button. So the image is kind of sandwiched into the middle of things rather than being first. This is actually better for accessibility. It's better to start with the headline and have the image somewhere down further. So it's a small tweak, but because Flexbox lets us change the order, it's a way in which we can uh, make things slightly more accessible. You do need to be careful though, anytime you use either Flexbox or Grid to rearrange the visual order and make it different than the content order, you really need to think through what's gonna happen for folks who are using a keyboard to tab through the elements in the page and make sure you don't screw that up. In general, don't change the visual order too much. Just make small tweaks. So let's look at the running code over here again. If I say inspect element, I can dig in. And here you can see, right, these are the articles. Here on the main, I've got display grid, grid template columns, repeat auto fit, min max 300 to 1FR, which is basically saying, browser, I want you to make columns. You decide how many, you decide how many are going to fit using the auto placement algorithm. Uh, I want each of the columns to be a minimum of 300 pixels and a maximum of sharing the space so that each of them are the same as each other, 1FR. We also have here a grid gap of 1 rem. Uh, and that means the browser is going to automatically make more columns or remove columns depending on how much space is available in the viewport. We don't have to tell it when to switch the number of columns. We don't have to tell it at what breakpoint. There are no media queries in this grid-based layout. It just works. Then we can see here, here's my article. The article says display flex. Flex flow column, which changes the flex flowing direction into the columnar direction, which makes it lay out in a vertical fashion rather than a horizontal fashion. Um, and for the most part, these things, the items here, are in fact in content order. You can see this image I've put in order negative one on it to make it go first in the order and align self center to center it in the space that's available. And then the question is, of course, what do we do for folks who don't have grid? There are quite a few people who still don't have grid. 
That's why I'm using Flexbox to do the layout inside the cards. I could use Grid to do the layout inside the cards, but far more people have browsers that support Flexbox than support Grid. So let me use the older technology so that more people have coverage, and I'll use Grid for the folks who have Grid, but let's also think about the folks who don't have Grid. So you can see here in my CSS that I have structured my code so that I've got here I'm going to start with the layout for folks who don't have grid. And then inside a at support statement, inside a feature query, I'm going to say at supports display grid, which is a little test. If you have grid, run this code. If you don't, skip all of this code. And I'm going to, first I'm going to kind of undo the layout that I did for the fallbacks. So uh, the fallback layout, I needed to add a max width and add some margins. But for the grid-based layout, I don't want that. So I'm going to set my max width to 10,000 pixels instead of 500 pixels. And I'm going to set all my margins to zero instead of having a left-right margin of auto. And I'm going to take off this the, the top and bottom margin on the article and set that to zero as well. And then this is the layout in grid. This is the entire grid-based layout to lay out those cards. Display grid, grid template columns, grid gap. That's all I need. All of the rest of the CSS is styling, uh, the, the styling that you see here, and it, it has to do with the flex-based layout. Uh, but this is it right here. This is it for my entire grid-based layout. A lot of people, they sort of make the assumption when they learn about grid and the need to write a fallback layout, they kind of assume that it's going to be really complicated. And honestly, the more I do this, the more examples I make, the easier and easier it seems. And I think, gosh, this isn't hard at all. Now, of course, this is a simple layout for just these cards on just this part of the page. And maybe my entire website is much more complicated. Maybe this is in the middle and I got a lot of stuff going on with a header and a sidebar and a footer and other parts of the page. But for this particular use of grid, creating a fallback just for that isn't so hard. And I can think about each of those other items in isolation. I can think about the header layout. Maybe I don't use grid at all. I can think about the footer where I have used grid, but I can write a different fallback for that particular use of grid. This is how we're going to work our new system. So let's look over here. I can look at um, my layout. Now, let's say I want to test my layout for no grid support. Well, how the heck am I going to do that? I am here on a Macintosh computer, and all the desktop browsers at this point support Grid. I didn't save one of the old ones from last year, so I don't have one that doesn't support Grid. So a quick thing I can do is I can come in here to my code where it says at supports display Grid, and I can just like misspell the word Grid because nobody supports Grid. <laughs> I can hit save and refresh my page, and now I have a browser that's going to not run that code and I'm going to see the layout and what it is that I got. This is how I wrote this layout in the first place actually. I, I, miss, I wrote the grid-based layout first and then I misspelled it in order to get this feature query to fail uh, and then I went ahead and wrote these kinds of um, the, the layout for the browsers that don't have grid and then I fixed this and set this back to the proper word grid and then I made sure, I, I made, then I wrote this code here to make the adjustments to make it work, the, the overrides to undo the non-grid-based layout to make sure that it works in both situations. That's how you can use grid today. That's how you can mix grid with Flexbox. It's how we're going to nest different kinds of formatting contexts one inside of another.